everyone. Hello, here we are. So gotta love all this ability to just stream all over the world. So <laughs> hi, <laughs> we definitely want to share this so that it does go all over the world. You know, sometimes I forget that. I, I think, oh, we're all over Washington, Whoa. but we're not, we're actually Whoa. all over when we are, we are uh, doing this. No matter where people are from, what country they're from, if they need a miracle, it's available. I just find that so wonderful. <laughs> it's, it's wonderful. It's fascinating. It's very fascinating. Well, we want you to uh, have your expectors up. Turn it up. Get them up. Or I should go this way because you're mirrored. <laughs> uh, turn it way up, you know. Uh, you can just show up in places and with no expectation and you're probably not going to get much but when you have really high expectation for you believers christians children of god you know have you ever gone to a, a service and you've heard amazing things about that person you just tend to get so much revelation about everything they're saying. It's like pure gold. I remember when we were in, uh, when I was in Bible college in Holland, Bible school, um, and I had heard about this real prophet. And I was like, what do you mean a real prophet? Because <laughs> I grew up with my parents prophesying. And uh, I know their spiritual parents were the 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 man was very the apostle was very prophetic but he was an apostle he was really into building but his wife uh sister elizabeth or they called her mother bep and the mm -hmm. bep is short in dutch for elizabeth mm -hmm. she was a prophetess they had always told told me and i didn't get to meet her i was the youngest in the family but she would see things on people. She dealt with, <laughs> she cast stuff out of people, um, you know, and she was just a real prophetess, but I had never encountered a real prophet. I had encountered prophetic people, but not a real prophet. So mm -hmm. I, here I am, uh, I think I'm 19 years old and I'm go, or maybe 18, and I'm going to Bible school and somebody says, uh, you know, one of our teachers who was a South African, who had moved to Holland and was now pastoring way in the south of Holland, where, where the border of Belgium is. And he has this friend who is a real prophet. And of course, once you start saying something like that, it spreads amongst mm -hmm. all the students. So we're all imagining like, is he wearing a long robe? What is he, does he only eat honey and locusts? What's mm -hmm. going on? What are, what are they saying? And then, you know, uh, as, as time goes on, we're hearing this man hears names from about people. He hears dates and, and I'm like, what, what is this? This is like the prophet Elijah, you know? Um, and so really bad news came about because I was a first year student and I knew the date that he was coming. And I find out that somebody decided, yeah, we should only have the, f the second year students be in that, <laughs> in that meeting. And I was like, why? <laughs> and somebody with a religious spirit on staff decided that, you know, first year students would get too distracted by that much power information. I don't know, some kind of thing. They used to say that about you. <laughs> It's, it's a religious spirit, you know, saying like, that's too distracting. Let them just focus on reading the Bible and praying every morning. So I started to go to battle. <laughs> I was like, this is ridiculous. And so of course they knew that, um, I had family in the United States and that I lived in the United States. So I ended up using this to to maneuver myself into the meeting. And I said, you know, what's nothing is worse for a preacher to show up from overseas. And when you get there, you have a handful of people because some kind of dumb person decided it was only for certain special people. So I said, that is super embarrassing. You got this guy flying in from South Africa and now you're going to have, you know, a one little classroom full of people. So that's so embarrassing. And I kept spreading it, spreading it. And so eventually 
uh, one of the leaders decided, yeah, that's ridiculous. Let's just have all the students in there. So I was like, Lord, <laughs> you know, it's because of me. They were all going to be in that room. I need a word. I want a word. <laughs> <laughs> and he actually heard me. <laughs> it's so funny. Um, he, he, I was the first one to get called down. This, of course, was Kim Clement. <laughs> and that was before he'd moved to the United States. And him, he and his wife, Jane, showed up. And wow. We had such anticipation because we had heard rumors about him. This is what happened with Jesus. People heard rumors about Jesus. vacation in Israel because we were going everywhere you know day after day several places a day and so um our dear friends had organized a little you know horse riding vacation yeah but we were really close to the Syrian border now it took us about two hours maybe drive at least uh from you know the Dead Sea all the way over there and I cannot imagine walking that in that heat uh so, but people did this because they had expectation and everyone who came to Jesus got healed when they came with expectation, except in his own hometown. We were just talking about that this week. In his own hometown, they had no expectation because they knew him naturally. Yeah. Like, ah, oh, this is Mary's son, this is Joseph's son, and we know his sisters. You know, his sisters play Barbies with my girls, whatever. <laughs> no expectation. And Jesus could only heal by actually forcing virtue into a few people by laying hands on them. But as far as far, oh, the internet is back. But, um, but as far as be able to uh, release with his authority based upon who he was, speaking speaking to to unclean spirits or speaking to you know bodies getting them healed even raised from the dead dead that did not happen in his own hometown because of a lack of expectation now that this is something that we need to learn if that's not a habit that you start talking to the lord about lord what should i expect from this meeting you know when we go sunday mornings we're, we're going to church I'm asking the Lord, what's on your mind? What can I expect? What do you want to do through me? You know, I think that, uh, especially with seated aliens, with reformer students, come on, if you can have an expectation of what God wants to do through you, we will have revival. In that moment, we will start having real revival. But it's when there's no expectation. Right. I remember we have had lots of revivals break out because we would tell testimonies or we would be on television and people would already see the rumor, the, the, the testimonies of miracles, and then they came with expectation. Next thing you know, revival breaks out. And that is something that we have got to have on a daily basis, have an expectation. Now, I wanna switch this really quickly for the next 15 minutes. I wanna switch that to uh, your personal life when it comes to healing prayer for specific things do not even start praying I love that you've preached many messages about this don't even talk don't say a word until you can say it in faith right. so so prayer yeah. when you just come to God and you have no faith you're basically only gonna come and complain you're going to, you know, complain to God how you're feeling and how hard it is and why am I going through through this and all these things. But when you first have faith and expectation, because that's what ex faith is. Faith is the expectation of the, the desired result, not the hope for it, not like, okay, I have envisioned the, exp the end result and I'm really hoping that it's going to happen. No, expectation is when I get there, it is waiting for me, yeah, right? And so when you book a table at a restaurant, you go with expectation. 
And Pastor Neil organized this wonderful uh, get together for all of us, ministers, uh, ladies, pastor and minister ladies. And we had a, several tables long <laughs> of Citadel women that are just wonderful. And we had a wonderful time. Now, when I got there, I didn't think like, oh, I better get there in half an hour later because, you know, it's always busy around lunchtime and it's going to be difficult. No, my expectation is there's going to be a seat for me because Pastor Neela has prepared the tables. Okay. Very good. So, so it's the same with prayer and it's the same for you right now. If you uh, are coming tonight, that's why I'm saying turn up your expectation because God is a good God. Yeah. And we're not coming to any joker that who, who changes his mind. We already know from scripture that God does not change his mind. There's no variance in him. He, he's not like a chameleon. One day he's hot and the next day he's cold. Right. One day he turns purple. The other day he's, he turns green. There is no shadow. There's no shadow with him of turning. So he doesn't change his mind about who he is, what he has promised. All of his promises are yes, and so be it unto me. That's what the Bible says. Amen means so be so it be unto it me. Unto and so whenever we see people that we call just heroes of faith in the Bible, including the teenager, right? <laughs> Mary, she was constantly... Uh, boasting about the Lord. Her expectation was in God because she knew who he was. He has to uh, declare who brings the lowly up and he brings the proud down, right? He's the one who establishes and he removes rulers. And she starts talking about God's character Basically, when you're describing God as you're magnifying him and you're praising him, you are just declaring your expectation, right? So when I'm in my, my uh, downstairs and I am in my prayer time and I begin magnifying the Lord, it's not the same every day because I'm actually coming with a different expectation of him, a different facet of God that I am believing for him to activate and to to bestow upon my life or my nation, the United States or in the Netherlands or whatever situation or per person that is on my heart, when I magnify the Lord concerning that thing, that is an expectation that God, you are like this. So this is what I'm yeah. expecting from you. Now, the Bible is so good about describing, God is so good about describing in his word who he is, why? Because he wants us to have expectation. The Bible is very clear that no one can please God without faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. You cannot even come before this high king of the whole universe. <laughs> come on, the creator of heaven and earth and all living creatures without faith. It's the only thing that pleases him. He's the great judge. And when you come with expectation that he's going to be good to you and he's going to hear your request and he's immediately going to grant it to you because you know his will, you know his character, that pleases him. And yep. then the, the result is expected, like my seat at Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> it was already waiting for me. It had my, my, my napkin and my silverware and all the goodness, right? <laughs> It was sitting there waiting for me because I knew what I was expecting. Now, God is making it very clear to us that first of all, in the Bible, he, he wants us to be so clear that he describes himself by all different names, which actually describe different parts of who he is, yeah. right? If he's the Prince of Peace. Okay, so we can now from that name, uh, that, that he's Jehovah Shalom, we can understand that that peace is something that we can ask him for. Come on. He is the all-knowing one, so we can ask him for wisdom and knowledge. You know, he's the almighty one, so we can uh, expect from him to give us breakthrough and victory. So he's the Lord uh, of hosts, so we can expect 
extra reinforcements from on high to assist us in trouble and to defeat all of our enemies, to defeat evil spirits and evil works. So we have to know when the Bible Bible says, when you come to God, believe that he is yeah. who he is. <laughs> he says, I am who I am. Tell Pharaoh that Moses, that I am who I am. And so, so when we believe who he is concerning our lives, concerning this day, this moment, why we've come to Curology, uh, the breakthrough that we have on our mind, the expectation is found in God, not in us. That's, that's the big thing I, we're always teaching. It's like, you know, people say, how can I grow in authority? Well, it's not about you. That's how you grow in authority. It's your discovery of who God is, yeah. what his name has in it, what his name represents, what the effect of his name is. That is the discovery. When you discover him, you start to grow in authority. That's amazing because you start to understand his relationship with you and the commands he's given you through his word. And it's all backed up by him. Now, anything that we need as a child from God has already been provided. That's the most beautiful thing. When you become a child of God, you get everything. You just preached on that, that he gives us all things that pertain to life and godliness. So many young people, so many, well, men, women, ministers all over the world. I'm seeing the Barna statistics. It's just nauseating. <laughs> are, are, are addicted to pornography. Well, if you're here today and I get, I have been getting requests for prayer from people all the way back to when I was a teenager and back when I was a young adult, uh, asking for prayer, for freedom from these unclean things. Now you can try to work on yourself when you are, when you are, have fallen into the trap of the enemy and you, you feel addicted to things. But the fact of the matter is trying harder to stop things isn't going to help you, but discovering who you are in Christ, that is going to be the power. So when okay. you dis discover first, you have to discover who Christ is, <laughs> and then you have to discover what he has, and then you have to discover how he has given that to you. So my, my answer has been, and Thank the Lord. God has always kept me from, from that, even though in Amsterdam it was fully available, you, you understand. I mean, I remember as a young child, we were walking around uh, in the outskirts of Amsterdam, me and my friends, my friends and I, and we had, um, there was maybe seven of us, and we were somewhere by uh by a big dune i don't even know where we had walked far we were far away from home wouldn't you know it was a magazine uh full of pornography i only saw it from a distance and nobody had even told me not to look at magazines of naked women or whatever else was in it i don't know but i knew that it was something I shouldn't look at. And, you know, the boys kept saying, look at this. And they kept trying to show us. And I kept saying, no, 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 no. God kept me in the middle of Amsterdam from getting sucked in to that unclean spirit. And the fact of the matter is, is that I believed when I got saved that the power of righteousness was given to me. <laughs> so my faith in God's power of righteousness is much higher than my faith in the ability for the devil to bind me in pornography or any other bondage. I don't believe his power is that great. That's I believe excellent. in the power of the righteousness that is bestowed upon me because when I got saved, that was the message of Morcerillo. I had tried to ask for forgiveness every night and give my little heart to Jesus every single night because I was always stealing chocolate and licorice. And I, I, you know, that was a real problem for me. 
And I thought for sure that Jesus come back as a thief in the night and I'm not going up because I'd stolen many anchor bars from the corner cabinet in the kitchen. And, and so, so when he preached that message that I would become a child of God and that I would become the righteousness of in Christ Jesus, my heart would be completely different that I, I would get a new spirit, that I would be an actual family member of God. I just believed it. I was like, this is amazing. This is the solution to the whole problem I have. My sin consciousness, come on. I didn't even know that word. <laughs> I just felt guilty all the time, every yeah. night. Every night I would cry and I would confess my sins to my mother like she was my priestess. And she would pray for me. And then after a while of doing this, like six months, I remember this took like six months. My mom said, listen, I'm not going to pray for you anymore. And I was like, oh, what? And I was like, I can't sleep unless you pray for me. And she goes, no, next time I'm going to spank you. And I was like, what? This is terrible. She had never spanked me before. <laughs> She swatted me one time with a spoon, but but that was it. But I was like, why? I'm telling you the truth. And she said, you just need to stop it. And I was like, this is terrible. Yeah, I don't remember if I stopped it. You just need to stop it. Just stop it. I know. So, uh, but anyway, the, the fact of the matter is, is when we have expectation of who the Lord is, that's where faith comes from hearing the word of god about himself hearing the the testimony the word of god's testimony uh, and other people's testimony of how god responded to the to them how god healed them how god delivered them how god gave them land how god blessed their family how god destroyed their enemies that is where expectation comes from. And that is where the difference is made in our bodies, in our minds. And we can let that faith go to so many places in our lives. This expectation, because we're going to get what we expect. That's how faith works. Now, I want to just read one scripture with you real quick. And that is in Matthew 7, verse 7. And it's just such a beautiful uh, passage, isn't it? Ring it. <laughs> Ring it. I like it. 7-7, seven, seven. You, you'll never forget this scripture again. I prophesied that over you. Matthew 7, verse 7 is the key to all your miracles, all your breakthroughs, everything you ever dreamed, dreamt of. This is the jackpot, people. So it, Jesus says, ask and it will be given to you. Now, do you come to the Lord like that? Like, so how I started doing that is I would come to the Lord in the morning and I still do that. And I tell him, I'm so excited to come and ask you for something this morning because I know I'm going to get it because you promised, right? I will ask and I will receive. So ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find it. Yeah, Knock and it will be opened to you. Come on. Many of us, when we first got saved, that's how simple our faith was. And we would constantly have instant miracles, wouldn't you? But then you start to complicate things with your intelligence, okay? <laughs> For everyone who asks, say, I'm an everyone, I'm an everyone. receives. Mm -hmm. And he or she who seeks finds. And to them who knock, it will be opened. Or what man is there among you? So this is funny because he's saying or, meaning I'm going to just drill this down even more. If that first argument I said wasn't getting you, here's the next one. Or what man is there among you who when his son asks for a loaf, right, bread, will give him a stone? That's never happened in our family. Here, suck on a rock. Yeah, there you go. Now, or if he asks for a fish, he will not give him a snake, will he? If you then, being evil, compared to God's mm -hmm. goodness, mm -hmm. know how to give good gifts to your children, which we even did that today. We provided a very nice meal for our children, good <laughs> gifts. How much more will the Father who is in heaven give what is good to those who ask him? He's, so he, Jesus is saying the Father is so much better than anyone who's ever lived on this earth. 
the best father you can imagine. I think of Joe. What a good father that guy was. <laughs> that guy, he was repenting on behalf of his own kids. He was doing all sorts of amazing things. What about the father that uh, had the prodigal son? I mean, no, no blame game. He's just making a whole feast just because his son came home after he like spent all of their inheritance, <laughs> right? But he's saying, Jesus saying, you don't even know what a good, a good father is. My father is so good. He's better than any father here on earth. How much more will you, will your father, and he's saying, it's my father, but also your father, yeah. uh, in heaven, give what is good to those who ask him. Now I want you to answer this question. Is healing good or is it evil? It's good, of course it's good. It's a good gift. This is why Jesus was handing it out so much. In everything, therefore, treat people the same way you want them to treat you, for this is the law and the prophets. So he's saying not only is your father good, but decide today that you are also good, yeah. like your heavenly father. So, so treat people the way you want to be treated by God the Father. Now, so today I want, I just wanted to hammer on this fact of ask and keep on asking, right? Uh, seek and keep on seeking, knock and keep on. I used to think that means that it may not happen. So you're going to have to keep asking. Yeah. But that's not what it means. I did a whole study on this today and it means the intensity and the determination that you're going to get what you ask for. <laughs> so that is the mindset that, like I said, when I come in the morning and I tell my heavenly father, I'm so excited to be here with you and I've got some things to ask you and I'm going to get them. <laughs> so I'm happy, right? So I'm coming with expectation that he's a good father. Thank you. And even though I don't think I have it in me naturally to hear his voice accurately or to receive a breakthrough, or to be able to destroy the works of the devil that morning, or, you know, to bring deliverance to people through my prayer, or to establish things in the heavens and on earth, and do all these amazing things, wage good warfare. <laughs> I don't believe I naturally have that in me at all, because I remember myself before the Lord had a, took a hold of me, but I believe that I'm coming to the one who does and that he is doing it through me. So I believe that. I believe that because he's good and he's faithful and he's imparted everything for life and godliness to me, I actually believe that he can make me hear him. I started to just believe that he could make me see things in the spirit. I started to notice things. And I don't need to get into details because then we're getting focused on, on all those manifestations, but I am seeing and hearing things. <laughs> and then they prove right either that day or later on. Uh, the Lord starts telling me about what's going to happen, what a person is going to do, what a person is going to ask. And lo and behold, hold, they do. Now, that's not because I have developed a special ability, but my focus is on who he is. Yeah. So today... I I want you to not focus on your ability, your such a believer that, you know, you get the breakthrough real easily, or even all of those that are working in the Zoom rooms today. Our focus is on who God, not how anointed we are. And I get, you know, all of these results. That is not how we come to those of you that need ministry. We're coming with our eyes on the Lord. We know what he's like. We know what he loves. We know how to bring you to that place of being able to receive from your good heavenly father. And so, so today come with that expectation and I'm knocking and I'm going to keep knocking because the end result is already predetermined. I'm going to get my miracle today. I'm going to get my healing today and I'm going to ask. Maybe you didn't hear me the first time, but I'm so excited because today is my day for miracles. Come on, of course he hears you. <laughs> but that is the determination. You ask, you will receive. You knock for healing. You will find it tonight. Amen. So good. And I think I want to just 
bring a caveat here because mm-hmm. I think sometimes we we think all all approaches this way. So if you're if you're a healing technician, the mm-hmm. way you go into the room is different than the person that is coming into the room to receive. Someone coming into a room to receive, they're asking, they're seeking, they're knocking. Mm-hmm. You as a technician are going in the name of Jesus into yes. that room so that you can distribute authority. So it's not, you know, like my wife said, that authority is not from me. I didn't have it before I found Christ, but it is now resident in me. Yes. I now have that authority is and it resides in me and it's my authority. He's mm-hmm. delegated that authority to me. There's two kinds of uh, two two kinds of things that we not, we need to understand when it comes to the power of God. We talked a few weeks ago that there's five kinds of power, and we found in that one scripture that there was four releases of power in just that one communication. Ask uh, whatever you ask, uh, not ask. So, so he's able to do exceedingly abundant, abundantly above all that you ask and think. And then, so what is that? Then there was four powers that were activated as someone who's releasing. We release in the name of Jesus as if Jesus was right here. We now become the intercessor of your life, standing in proxy of, for Jesus. Jesus is, is Jesus doesn't, uh, he has authority. When he prayed for the sick, he didn't ask for the Father to heal. Mm-hmm. He healed the people. Mm-hmm. So, But he could only do that knowing that he was standing in proxy in complete understanding of God's design and God's desire. Yeah. The ambassador of Christ Jesus to release exactly the way that he would release and to say and to do exactly what he would do. So we still have some rooms, some room open for the healing technicians. We have, mm-hmm. um, we have, uh, I don't know, I, I don't know how many rooms, but we have a couple of rooms. So I want to encourage you to get into the room and let someone pray for you in that proxy. In that position. Now, most people, they come and they go, I'm standing in proxy for someone else. Mm -hmm. I'm standing in proxy for this person who needs healing. But you have to understand, when you are releasing healing, you're standing in proxy for the hands of Jesus, for the feet of Jesus, the mouth of Jesus. So when you get into the prayer room, the reason you want to go into the prayer room and be a part of a healing room is because there's someone standing in the position of Jesus as his ambassador that are, that's sent into that prayer room that's been anointed and ordained by us. Not not that they're all ordained ministers, but they've been sent in in the and and we come in the name of Jesus. And so when you know that that authority is in place, it's that authority of alignment. If you think about the the Pope, the only reason people think that the Pope has authority is because the hands of Peter which was considered the first pope, was laid hands on the next person and all the way down. So their mindset is that there's an unbroken fellowship with the original uh, anointing. And that unbroken fellowship is able to pass and transfer to the next one, to this this pope is supposed the power that you need. He will send through someone else the power that you need. So when you get into that, if you're looking to, to get into that, you can just uh, contact, what is it, 1-800? No. No? <laughs> I want 206. 206. 567-14. almost gave out my, my, cell, my cell number. Yeah. I think. So, I, so I went to, so I went to 800 real quick. <laughs> 206. Um, and then consecutive numbers five, six, seven, and then fourteen hundred. Fourteen hundred. But it's in the in the notes here. Yeah, and and then so make sure you do that, and you're gonna text healing to that. So do that quickly. Make sure you get your spot, get locked in, and make sure you you have someone in agreement. That's not only just they're pleading with you. This is one of the things that we're teaching our leaders, our leaders as mm-hmm. as they grow. We have to teach them yeah. that when they come. When someone comes to the altar, you're not praying a prayer of agreement with them. No. Your goal is, I mean, there's times of prayer. Will you agree with me? Yes, yeah, let's yeah, agree. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> we agree it together. Oh, yes, we agree. Oh, it gets so, it gets so cozy and comfortable, right? It's just so. <laughs> we're loving but, on each but, other. But, that's but, what it is. But that's the, the point yeah, is, is we don't want to do that because I don't want to. 
I don't want to sit there and just, oh, to praise the Lord. I don't want to do that. It just, it gets so out of the realm of authority in the yes, spirit. Yes, you're and taking so, things and giving things. That's what right, you need to be right, doing. Right, right. And so when you, what we're teaching our leaders, our, our leaders is when you're at the altar or yeah. when you're, even before you get to the altar, if you have a whole line of people, they're not coming up there. You don't have time to stand in agreement with everybody. You're yeah. not their intercessor at the time. Now you're their priest. Yeah. You're the one that's going to release and you're the prophet. You're the one that's going to release and you're release power yeah. and authority. And there are times when people come to us and say, would you agree with me? Greg? Yeah, and that's fine. And I said, or somebody, and, and that's fine too. And if, if you are ever on me, when someone does it, I'll, and if I don't have, I'm, I'm going to, first of all, listen to hear God, what do you have to say about mm -hmm. this? So I'll ask them questions. asking questions to tap into the depth of their spirit yeah. i want to find out what's going on in the inner person and i want to hear i want to hear what their spirit is saying i want to hear mm -hmm. from the holy spirit and i want to tap into their spirit mm -hmm. and so i'll ask them so how long has this been i don't really care i really don't care if it's been 15 days or three. but i yeah and, and to me it doesn't really do anything except for build rapport for that person to build you know don't tell give me. away all your secrets well i'm i'm <laughs> <laughs> I, I want them to know because, but then the whole goal is, is once God says, okay, pray for this, yeah. pray for their neck, pray for this, Command pray for this. this. So whatever. people come and says, oh, I have this, 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 I can't get healed. And all of a sudden, you know, the, the Lord will say, oh, there was emotional trauma that happened at this age that's preventing the healing from happening. So yeah. this is what happens in the healing rooms as well. Yeah, they don't it's just... not always emotional trauma. It's not, a not, that's not our thing. It doesn't come out of my sleeve because no. it's like you know get healed and stop no, thinking that, that way happens but, sometimes. but but this would but the word of knowledge is really because they i could pray all day and agree yes, be in agreement be with a million what, things what they want all day long but until i hear from god there's no authority that's right until i know exactly what god says there's no authority yes until i know exact exactly what god's intention We're is just making up stuff and otherwise. so when they come and they do the prayer of agreement will you do the prayer agreement? i mean there's a point where i'm just talking to them so i don't have to do the long prayer and once i get into once i know exactly what i'm supposed to pray then we just we just command, command it. we command and so know that when you hear someone starting to command, they're not being arrogant. There's people that have said, why, who do you think you are? I know who I am. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I don't have I, a doubt I know who I am. In whose name and I'm coming. I know who, coming. in whose name I'm coming. So well, I want you, you to know. Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are, right? But the fact is, is they, <laughs> they don't judge the, sep they don't judge. I mean, they, they know, they see the results, but they think that I can have the same results without the same kind of yeah, confidence. That's a very you can't scary have thing. the same results without that level of confidence. The mm -hmm. level of confidence is what determines the result. And so if you want greater results, yeah. you've got to have greater confidence in God and you have to have greater confidence in who you are in God. Yeah. And that's extremely important. And so when you know that, yes, there is, there is something the Lord's been speaking to me. And before I get into this little, I have one little verse. And, but the Lord's been what I've been learning. That looks and like a big verse, but anyway, it is, it is a, it is a, it is a lot. But I'm only going to take one verse okay. out of all of that, Lord willing. Um, but but what I've been, I'm, you know, I'm just I'm on the last chapter. I finished I finished this a new book, uh, pro, uh, protagonist, and the I'm on the very last chapter, and I have. I've kind of laid out the last the last chapter. I have the outline of it, and I'm just, mm -hmm. but I'm getting so much knowledge from the Lord. So I haven't, I've, I've been just studying and studying and studying for this last chapter, and I don't even know if it's all going in it, mm -hmm. but it just activated something. And I keep thinking about this level of authority, this level of of a believer, because what we're what we're the reason Barna mm -hmm. has the statistics it has is because we've not been training believers to be authoritative believers we've yeah. been training people to get ready to go to heaven yeah and you receive jesus and that's great and that's lovely and jesus is love and he has and to help all you of these so things. much with so many issues but yeah and and <laughs> every day is what people feel but no one has been trained to be to, to who who they really are yeah. in this transformation in christ because christ is not a salvation that gets us to heaven only but it's a salvation from everything that is in this earth. Yeah. Everything in this earth can be we can be safe from. So people believe that, you know, terrible things should you know, should happen and could happen. But that I think it's according to your faith, right? Mm -hmm. According to your faith, according to your expectation. 
So I, you know, I want to just encourage you. Yes, we we are all about prayer and prayer seeking. But know what every every moment of context you're in. Know that when you're in the context of intercession, that's different than the context of authority. Yeah. The context of of, of 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 receiving or approaching the throne of God uh, for your ask, seek, and knock. Mm -hmm. Right, that tenacity. Because I had the same thing in my heart tonight to talk about the tenacity that don't yeah. turn away. Don't no, turn away. Treat, Stay predetermined steady. To get it. Predetermined. Like, because there's times I'm I'm going in, and and I'll say be healed, and they're not healed. I'm like, okay, wait. That now that bothers me. I don't walk yeah, away and go. Yeah, something is wrong then. <laughs> something's wrong, and so, so the, we gotta so get we, into so it. we get into the ask, seeking and knocking. But at the same time, I'm asking the Lord. I'm seeking the Lord, what's and I'm knocking hindrance? on the door. What's the hindrance so that I can deal out the authority the way it's supposed right. to be? If your gun jammed, if your gun jammed, if you were in the police officer and y'all said you're yeah. you're in a, you're in a, you you're, your gun it. jammed, you go, oh my goodness, let's do what we got to do. You find out why that gun jammed. You don't right. sit there and just throw the gun no, you away pull and it go, apart. I give up, I <laughs> give up. Take me in. I'm gonna be your whatever take you me to right, China. take me <laughs> and waterboard me. Whatever you gonna do, China. Duct tape me from head to toe. Praise God for America, right? America, <laughs> America, right? And so you have to know. <laughs> You have to know that there is an important revelation that we need to have as yes. the body of Christ is that if your gun jammed, you don't throw the way the whole the whole concept. The concept is, is you don't understand. You didn't understand how to clean your gun. You didn't understand to you didn't load it. You didn't even load it. It wasn't even loaded. The clip is not in it. And you're like, what's going on? I'm shooting. I'm shooting. But it's you're shooting nothing. Well, that's your problem. That's not God's problem. Yeah. That's your problem. Yeah. And so you need to know that it's extremely important that you learn to you learn you learn to use your gun. You yeah. learn to use you know some, the part, components. You, you know that if you got those three, four pieces together. It always works. Yeah. So you just take it apart and go, do I have this part, this part, and this part? <laughs> click, click, click. Yeah. It yeah. works. It works. It yeah. works. And, it's, and, and then, you know, if you, if you it's, load it, still load good. it. Yes. It's <laughs> right. still good. Am I coming in the name of Jesus? Yes. Yep. And, yes. So am I his child? Am I his yes. child? Right. Does he give me power? Yes. Is his name right? still the same? For sure. Yes. This is a gun class. <laughs> we got gun class. We got it. We got it. We got to go ahead and we got to right. get ready because I'm telling you. That's a whole other kind of show. <laughs> and and I'm, I was thinking about today about the men's, the men's, uh, anyway, I'm going to do, I'm going to do a men's retreat wow. and it's all, I'm going to see if I can get some special forces guys to come and train us. Why only the men? I want to do this, ladies. Because I'm trying to do something to grow our men's ministry. Okay. Then I'm going to do it to grow our women's. I want to come too. Too, I'm going to be no, a part of the can't. special forces you're team. You're not. You're I'm not part team. of it. I'm coming. <laughs> you can't get all personal about it. <laughs> it's, it's, I'm just trying to come up with another gig for my dudes. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Go ahead. You guys can join us at the end of the weekend. We're not joining you. We're having our own. What do you all mean? Right. <laughs> we'll be well prepared, man. Either way. Yeah, fun. Either way. <laughs> so, so we have to understand, though, the, the problem is not God. It's not that he lacks power. The problem no. is that Christianity is not weak. No. Uh, the problem has nothing, nothing to do the with the... The assignment is the, the same. The assignment none, has nothing to do with any of the components. The problem is, is that this whoever was using it's a human error right yes, human error human and we error. don't actually ever say you know what your christianity has human error in it and <laughs> you need to actually no. fix your your christianity your human error is the reason yes that there we have a problem and the devil didn't get more powerful that's another go-to that yeah. people do oh there's some kind of mysterious demon that we've never encountered before this one is so big and so powerful and he's got 12 tentacles um that no the power of the devil has not increased since jesus took his weapons away no. <laughs> and the thing is we have all of his weapons yeah. so if he has any weapons it's only because you've given them back to him right. so <laughs> it's like oh there's my gun you, you know one of the right. most worst thing that a police officer can ever experience is a is losing their, their gun yes that's when we give our words to the devil. <laughs> it's like you gave me your words. You gave up. You gave him all your bullets. So so this let so yes, the goal tonight is yeah. is to learn the mindset of a healed and of a healer. Right? Of the healed and of a yeah. healer. So if you can learn the mindset of what's been taught, because sometimes I think that people are listening just to try to find the next little miracle clue. 
But miracles mm-hmm. happen because of mindsets, the proper, proper yeah. mindset, that expectation. Or the reason some people get healed the fourth time is because they finally reach the proper expectation. Yeah, yeah. The expectation, okay, this is my day, this is it. The people that get healed, every time they testify, they, they were like, I knew that this was my day. Yeah, or always I needed it. that so badly, I was taking it, right? They were, there was a point of no return. Yeah, I knew I had to come. And now look, you're here, so you knew you had to come. And they knew that they were going to get healed yeah. that day. They yeah. knew it. Yeah. I mean, because there's, there's, we just have to know. There's the result of knowing, mm-hmm. and so Proverbs, Proverbs thirteen twelve says this: Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but when the desire comes, or the, another translation says, when re- desire returns, mm-hmm. it is the tree of life. I, I want to start from the back, from the end. It is the tree of life, and work our way up okay. to the front. So the end of it, the end of. When hope returns, or when hope comes back, or when desire returns, because desire is a product of hope, right? Mm-hmm. Byproduct of hope. When you lose your desire, you've lost all hope. Yeah. I was, we've been, um, I've been watching this. Whenever I watch a YouTube video or something, I'm watching. I've been seeing these commercials that come up, and it's about this these these online psychologists or psychiatrists or whatever. Yeah. If you need a therapist, that's what it is, a yeah, therapist. So much. And they, they call it better something, whatever. Right. I don't want to say the name of it. But, um, you know, they're, they're talking about if you need a therapist. And it's all these young young people, m- millennials, young young adults, therapy issues that they're experiencing. Right. And, they, and, it, and, and, and there's a whole group of young people that are saying that they don't have hope for the future. Mm-hmm. And that has now made their heart sick. And so now they yeah. have physical and emotional and Fear. they have these they have these fears and anxiety is huge. Yep. Um, it's but it's all because of the the improper uh, expectation yeah. of the future, which gives an improper stickability. Yeah. You don't you can't stick to something that you don't expect to work out. You right. always fault and falter away from what you don't expect to work out. If you expect things to work out, then things will work out. I was uh, just, you know, I, I, I know people won't like what I'm about to say. Oh, dear. They won't like it because, you know, they, 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 prejudice is, is, is formed in so many ways. Yeah. So I really, really, truly, 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 with all my, my heart, admire um, Joel Osteen. I just think he is just a real champion. Yeah. I think, I mean, I think he's really... Well, because we've met him up close and personal, too. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, so, again, I was going out to... to, And, um, you know, I've heard him say this recently, he and his wife. His wife would say that, you know, she she hears him every time he gets out of bed in the morning, and he says, "Um, thank you, Lord, something similar. I may... This is going to be a great day or something. Yes. And that you have blessings for me, right? Yeah. Some kind of statement like that. Words. Great That's expectation. Great. Ex- he sets an expectation when he, <laughs> the moment he wakes up. And she thought, you know, and she's just always heard him say it. <laughs> this is a great day. <laughs> this is going to be a great day. This is a great day. Something like this. And yeah. God's God's blessing is on my life. Yes. And this is how he wakes up. This is what he says before he hits the his feet hit the ground. Yes. This is. Uh, he and she said he's, he she heard him say she heard of him saying it before they got married yeah and and she just didn't she just but not recently and they've been married for quite some time they yes. have an adult son that just got married yeah so she just now bringing up that you know this is this has always been very you know interesting to me yeah but it's it's the way he does it every yes. day and so I just imagine I just think that that's that's really beautiful that you can set the pace of your day with hope. Yes. Now the Bible, this word hope in in Proverbs thirteen in translation is the word expectation. It's the same word, word expectation. The, the the Bible reference in uh, in the New Testament, hope is the word expectation. Hope is always expectation. So if you don't have a high expectation, you have no hope. If you mm-hmm. have a if you have low hope, you have low expectation. Hope and expectation are the same exact word. Some people think hope is just just a meta, just just a mysterious kind of thing, but it's really set in a focus and set to a focus point you expect something to happen you expect something good to happen or you expect something bad to happen this says hope that has been deferred uh so we're going to go back to that in a moment but it it, but the last part it says it's a tree of life when it comes back when desire returns so that means the opposite of the tree of life of opposite of the tree of life in our in our reference 
is always going to be the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Yes. <laughs> where, where the introduction of sin was always the knowledge of yes. good and evil. What is hope supposed to do? Hope is supposed to supersede the knowledge that is so evident out yes. there. So when a young person says, well, I don't see any expect, I don't see any future for me. I don't see any hope. I have no mm -hmm. hope in the world. The world's going to die. Well, that means you don't actually believe that you have, the, there's, you don't have the right knowledge, first of all, to know that you're the only yeah. one that makes the future better because we're counting on you. <laughs> we, yeah. The reason you were born yeah, is because generation. we were hoping that you were going to make the world better. Yeah. Now, if you don't see it better, then we should, we should, you, you are going to be gobbled up in the desert because we need another generation that's yeah. going to say, Hey, we hope for something good and something better here. Well, that, that, that is a knowledge thing. It's yeah. the knowledge of good and evil. Now the knowledge of good and evil was the first introduction of sin. That, that eating of that tree, right? Isn't that mm -hmm. true? The eating of the tree. So the knowledge of good and evil was the cause of sickness. Sickness was not prior to that. No. But eating the knowledge of good and evil activates you sick. sick, activates yes. sickness. And that sickness starts in the heart. It doesn't start in the mind. It doesn't start in the body. Yeah. All sickness starts in the heart. All sickness starts yeah. in the in the inner being, in the inner man. Your inner so processes. Your inner thinking, inner processes of thinking, right? Your meditation. That's why the Bible says, "Hey, expectation. Your expectation, and give yourself to the right expectation, which makes you knock." and keep on knocking makes yeah. you ask and keep on asking yeah it makes you seek and keep on seeking why because you know it's there you know it's supposed to be there and my inner witness is not saying it's never going to come my inner witness is saying it's on its way yes is this it is this it we've yeah. been knocking on so many doors for buildings for the last six to seven years but we know it's ours and i know it's ours and the fact it's is is there. there's a lot of things that we could have done that i that we walk and go we could do this, but no, nah, it's going to really bother us. It's going to bother us because uh -huh. it's not the inner witness. It's not what we expect. It's a, it's a selling out on a lower vision. And we could do that if we allow the de if we defer our hope, right? If we, Shrinking if we, everything. if we defer our hope now that that means deferred hope means I'm heading the right one direction. And then all of a sudden I see something over here that it catches my eye. And I'm now going to move the energy of that direction into that right over there. So I'm now going to be distracted, deferring means yes. I'm taking the hope that I would put into waiting and knocking and knocking and knocking and seeking and seeking and seeking and seeking and finding and finding and asking <laughs> the, all that hope that I would put there. I'm now going to cut it short and I'm going to just get the easy route of whatever that is or whatever that is over there. Right. I'm just going to take that easy route. Now, that's a deferred hope. Now, what that does when I do that, I've actually now made my heart sick because I know what my heart, that heart, the inner man wants, wants what's ahead of you, what you were going after. And your natural man wants it easy, right? That's mm -hmm. the, that's a sick place. That's right. Now, when you're divided in focus, when you're divided in that, you have to understand that that division makes you sick. Yeah. People, people having divided minds, dualistic heart, dualistic mind, they are worried and stressed out. That makes you a sick person. Yeah. Knowing what you're called to do, but doing opposite of that makes you a sick person. Yeah. You've Those given things up all open up your being, right? This person who, who is living, but feels like dying, right? That person is just, just lulling. That's a horrible yeah. place to be, but people live there because they're not single and they didn't have a, they didn't keep the expectation mm -hmm. to the point of stickability. Yes. Stick it out, stick it out, stick it out. I mean, there's yeah. times where I'm like, you know what? I know that there's, maybe we are just supposed to be, just just take the next building, the next opportunity to come the way. Cause I see people just doing things and they're all, they're all blessed in what they're doing, but that's their expectation. It's beneath what I wanted to do, but it doesn't mean it's beneath. I shouldn't say that, I'm sorry. It's no, different than what I wanted to do, yeah, but it's not beneath. Yeah. It's not beneath. It just, for me, it would be, you, it would be, it would be not what I wanted to right. do. Right. Like if you, uh, it would be beneath you to go after being a brain surgeon. That's not a bad job. No, That's it a would fantastic. Be, that would be beneath But for me. you, it's beneath you because it's not your path. And it's a great, great vocation for someone, but it's yes. not my path. That would be beneath me. That's not right. my high call. Right. So we, we, we need to know that what sometimes sickness starts because you are, you're, def you're putting your hope into something else. I believe that if you go to an aspirin bottle before you first pray, you're deferring your hope. And your your inner man goes, gosh, if we could have just talked to God about this this headache yeah. before you actually went to the aspirin Exercise bottle. Exercise some 
spiritual right process. just even if you you like i'm giving it five minutes or whatever i'm give yourself some some spiritual praying Ooh. in the spirit for five minutes just Read build yourself use it use it to build yourself up just pray in the spirit right and then then you you may go oh you know the edge dropped off i don't actually need it anymore right you just press in a little bit i don't need to actually take that aspirin anymore the edge dropped off i can i okay it's going away right just give that little bit of oomph now are you are we against you having to take medicine if you have where according to your faith you do it is according to your faith yeah but if you want to actually keep if you feel like i should have done this or maybe you didn't even know but keep put your expectation in the lord yeah. And you will find some different different levels of spiritual dynamic. That's faith. You will find the tree of life. Yes. The tree of life. The thing that causes life to manifest. When but when desire comes, when desire returns, returns. the tree it's the tree of life. So coming back to a place where I feel like living again. Coming back to a place where I feel like, you know, I can we can do this again. There's so many times I feel like, man, I I I just feel like Quitting on something, right? Feel, then I feel, then then it's like, okay, Lord, let's talk about this. I need to get some direction on this. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, he's like, okay, I feel like I can do this again. We can do yeah. it. Desire, return, return. desire starts to return, and then then expectation starts to come back. Mm -hmm. So you lose expectation when you've lost desire, right? You lose expectation, then desire goes. Your heart gets sick. You take on the first thing. Uh, but when you when you have stayed the course mm -hmm. and you're able to go, I Lord, I don't want to give up, but I feel like giving up my because feelings are real. I'm not I'm not I'm not the one that says feelings aren't real because I deal with people every day and I say why'd you do that? Well, because I, I felt, felt like, like it, it. right? Because I know feelings <laughs> are real. People make decisions based upon feelings. Yeah, so so not we based upon what we need know. to know we need to know exactly how to move in this world and and it's part of it is just sticking to what but is longer than you expect yeah. staying in it and find the resources to do it ask seek and knock keep the desire keep the expectation don't let your heart get sick because you've divided your you what you really want and what you tolerated tolerance tolerating something is just horrifying yeah and yeah. how great is this because besides your symptoms and medical issues whatever it may be how exciting is it that hope can return and that expectation can return. So all is not lost. You may say, well, I've, I've never really gone and pushed for uh, healing spiritually. I've always gone to my medicines. You know, I was raised this way, but look at this scripture. I mean, this is an amazing scripture that it says that, that if hope is deferred, then when it returns, hope returns, it is a tree of life. And that's what God wants for you today, that he wants to give you life and he wants to give you an expectation. He wants to give you your hope back, hope in him, not hope that something is going to happen, but hope that he is going to come and he's going to touch you today. That's amazing. So think about a tree. Mm -hmm. and trees are designed to bear fruit if they're fruit yeah. trees. We know the tree of life is a fruit bearing tree. Yeah. So when hope, when hope, when hope returns, mm -hmm. comes back, that hope tree, that's now a hope tree. Yeah. You have to eat the fruit of that tree. You have to eat of that and just digest of it and let the desire, oh, I feel this again. I feel like, I feel like I can do this again. Eat of that, eat of that. And it becomes, and it restores and it rec this recovery and life and living all the that you're gonna live on is gonna come out. So don't think that it's just, uh, it's a tree of life, but you have to eat of it. You have to, mm -hmm. you have to partake of it. You have to thank God for it. You have to proclaim it. You have to declare, you have to, you have to pro prophesy to your future. You have to actually, right, just declare it. So that's gonna be eating. That's gonna be the way you eat of it. It is the, it is a tree of life. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you, Nahi. Bless you. Yes, we're glad that you're here too. So wonderful to be here together. And uh, tonight we're believing with expectation because we know who God is. We know who we are. We know who you are. You're the recipient of a miracle from God. And so we're going to see that happen. So have, have something specific uh, on your mind right now that you're coming to God for that you want to see a breakthrough in. And maybe you don't need a uh, healing, but you're coming here to get trained and your expectation is, okay, now I have that aha moment. I understand that I'm not the one 
It's going to be praying long, compassionate prayers. But I, I have received the authority of the name of Jesus. And so from now on, my expectation is whoever I pray for, God's going to flow through me with his authority and power. That thing is going to be destroyed. So that's exciting. All right. So if you need prayer, we're going to pray for you. Just list your things and we'll pray. We have six more minutes before the healing room rooms open so if you're interested in getting into healing rooms our healing technicians are standing by you can text healing to 206-567-1400 206-567-1400 and they will be glad to pray with you yeah. and to speak with speak with you pray with you speak to the lord on their behalf and so father we thank yes, you for what you're father. doing we thank you for the healings and the manifestations that you have for people we activate anyone on here that's here to be activated for healings to actually manifest the miracle working power. We thank yes. you for that in Jesus' name. We ask, Father, for every level of sickness, disease, yeah, infirmity to be healed. We release the power of the Holy Spirit. Someone's back is being healed. Uh, someone's back is being healed. We thank you, Father, for the power of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for that, that mission trip and the green card to come yes, through. Come we thank through. you for uh, Fre yes. Frederick in Holland. We release the healing virtue to yes. Frederick. We thank you he that you're healed and that pneumonia to be healed in Jesus', Jesus name. name. We, we just declare that you are the faithful father. You're faithful in every yes, way. God. And we declare your life and your power it's so that lower back be right healed. Uh, we command your yes. throat, someone's throat to be healed, sinus yes, condition to be healed yes. in Jesus' name. We command that plugged thank ear to pop open. Amen. Right now, we'll release the power of the Holy Spirit thank to you. you and we thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for all that you're doing. We thank you, Lord, that carpal tunnels healed and you release the power of God to you. We yes, thank you, Father, Lord. in Jesus' yes, name. Yes, God, thank you, Lord. Perfect uh, Blood pressures. Yes. Uh, we thank you. Yeah. Well, amen. Well, amen. We'll, we'll let you go. Yes. Make sure you tune in next week, every Tuesday night, Healing healing Room and uh, Curology, a little bit of teaching for you so that you can get ready to receive mm. all, all your healing. We thank you for uh, your knee to yes. be healed. We knee command knees, healed. any swelling, Jesus. any 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 discomfort, we command it to be done right now. Thank you. We thank you. For, we command all addictions thank you, Lord, for to silence. be healed in yes. Jesus' name. Release the peace of God. We thank you, Lord, for guidance. Uh, my wife and I are oh, you're horrible. Yes, so we declare over you and your wife the power and authority that thank with you, one Lord. word you will release freedom Shaka, and liberty, Shaka, Shaka, soundness Shaka. of mind, health and freedom from all addictions, and uh, the power of righteousness to search for through people yes from lord. the top of their heads to the bottom of their Bless feet them, we thank you lord for a move of god in aberdeen we're oh, so excited yeah. for that in jesus I remember name Simon. bless you Simon. yes wonderful i think his wife is uh tiredness uh, okay julie thank you we you. declare lord a, a revelation for julie to see all Sandra. of her relationships through thank you lord um through your eyes lord let her see who the people are supposed to be what place in her life and what her job is in that relationship and how to bring jesus to these people and everything your heart and your mind for people in jesus name thank you yes tiredness to be healed in jesus name we thank you uh, hoffman i saw hoffman we released the power of god to you in jesus name james hoffman was there for a moment Okay. Um, we're the power of God to you, James, that your, neck, your neck is healed yes. in Jesus' name. I saw that earlier. It's an alignment. We declare alignment in all the vertebrae in Jesus' name. We command them to come into the right place. James and I were in Bible school together. Yes. Love you. Wonderful. We love you, James. And your Bless family. you, man. He was also one our one of our first church plant meet, planters yes. with us. And when we moved to California, you were so kind to take uh, little Jimmy Blue, our fish, <laughs> and gave him a new home. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for doing that. That fish would always try to attack me every morning. In well, he couldn't attack you. He was in a bowl. But yeah, he didn't like you. He was... It was a beta, male beta fish. And it's amazing how God makes fish to know if there's a male or a female outside of their glass 
water bowl. <laughs> <laughs> but he knew he knew what you find it amazing it's amazing because he, he would just swim around when i was in the room but as soon as you come in the room he'll be like Wah! like a shark and all of his fins would go straight up straight up and he'd be so angry at you <laughs> it's so funny uh, <laughs> he tried yeah so thanks james <laughs> So I, I tried to cast the devil on him all the time, but James, was, you probably handled it really he well. He was just an alpha. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, appreciate y'all. Yes. Be blessed. Talk Thank to you. you soon. And have a blessed rest of your week. And we'll see you on Sunday. Join us on Sunday, not just online, but come and, and join us in person by texting that same number, but just text church instead of healing, and you'll get an address. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right. Well, bless you. See ya. See ya.